Hey everybody, it's me, Kyle, and I have been really enjoying bringing these podcast interviews uh, for you guys because they've really helped me reconnect with a lot of familiar faces, including today, Masha. Masha is back, and for those of you who don't know, Masha is Vietnamese but born and raised in Belarus, in Minsk. And Belarus has a very, very dear place in my heart. So let's go all the way back, Masha. How did your parents end up in Belarus? Where is Belarus? What is Belarus, actually? Should I say hello to everyone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you, you could. Yeah, you could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so my parents, as I remember, came like uh, in the 90s uh, because of exchanging of labor force, you know, between Vietnam and Belarus. So they end up in Baranevich at first, then they moved to Minsk when I was one year old, one year old, and one year old baby. So why Belarus? Um, I think in Vietnam, uh, the northern part of Vietnam, they moved mostly to Europe, Russia mostly, and then the southern part, they moved to, the, to, move to Australia and the States. So I think that's the reason why they end up in Belarus. You meant, because they're from the central part. Right. Okay. Um, from from where exactly? Guangbin. Guangbin, right. North Vietnam sided with the USSR during the war. So after the war, the USSR wanted uh, certain things back uh, in terms of their help. Uh, they helped North Vietnam with weapons, technology, et cetera, et cetera. And so they needed a labor force, right? People to help build these various Soviet countries. So uh, quite a few people from central Vietnam went to uh, the USSR and many of them remain. And that's where you get most Vietnamese Belarusian. And it's, it's incredible. Like I, I'm getting chills right now just talking about it because there's just a, something so dear to me, right? Because in a sense, we're we're opposites, right? In a sense, if you really think about, it, we're yeah. like polar opposites, different sides. Let's not get all political and you know and stuff like that. No. But but different <laughs> sides. Yeah, we are. We are different sides, right? More or less, you know, North Vietnam, North Central Vietnam, South Vietnam, American, Belarusian, right? So let's mm-hmm. go. Let's go talk about that, right? Belarus. Where is it? I know a lot of people have no idea what it is, even. I mean, it's made news recently, and we'll we'll we'll, de- we'll dive into that too. Yeah. But 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 tell me something about Belarus. Belarus is in the center of uh, Europe, but a lot of people think of Belarus as like a part of Russia because we speak Russian too. And Belarus is not just is it not is not a popular destination. We don't make a lot of noise, and not a lot of countries know about us. But right now, especially in this year, last year, we made. Some news. Yeah, we'll, we'll, don't worry. We'll get into that. We'll get, get know... Yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into <laughs> that, right? But but tell me interesting yeah. things about Belarus. Interesting things. What are you guys known for? <laughs> you you got to be known, known for something. For, uh, for the love of potatoes and vodka, I guess. It's how embarrassing. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to say, but like um, Belarus. Should I start with like kind people and stuff? Because we don't have like, we're not very popular among tourism, tourists, you know. We haven't done anything great. Oh my God, I'm but, afraid but, I will but, get so much. <laughs> but you're, you're, known, you're known for your trucks, right? You guys build the largest trucks. Trucks? Yeah, like but these. they are not the biggest trucks in the world, right? But they're huge. And these that's are the like the biggest ones. In, they're big, but they're not the biggest. That's why I don't, I didn't include them. But they're like two, they're like massive two ton trucks. That's that's what I remember in terms of, yeah, of Belarus, right? And the other thing about Belarus though is I, I've always kind of described it as going back into time almost. That's how I felt when I when I landed at the airport. Because the mm-hmm. architecture is very Soviet, right? The the airport itself, it reminded me of like a like almost like a an alien kind of like uh, from the 1980s base or something like that, right? I felt like I was on another planet almost, right? It, it just felt so yeah. out of this world, right? And and as an American, I, I just I'm so fascinated by by so the the Soviet Union, you know. So it, it still has a lot of like so Soviet relics and, and architecture, right? Yeah, right. 
uh, especially in the center, and we don't seem to like want to destroy it and rebuild it because it it looks good and it's beautiful and it's like a part of history, so we want to keep it. I just wanted to say one sure, thing. Sure, sure, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, because feel... I feel so embarrassed. You ask like, what was about Belarus, and I couldn't say it, but I love Belarus wholeheartedly. It's just the feeling that I cannot describe, and the things that I love, they are like. They are not material, materialistic, material things. Yeah, okay. Because it's the feeling when you get there and the people and the, like, everything around you. That's what I love about that. I just cannot describe it. Like, like the, the, <laughs> you mean like the feeling of Minsk, right? Like just walking around or... Yeah. But I know, what, like that. But I know what you mean with that feeling that you get in Minsk. Mm-hmm. I know exactly. I mean, I I never lived there, but I've been there enough times to to know the feeling of just walking down the street towards the bus station, right? And then there's that KFC over there. If I close my eyes right now, I can still visualize it. I can still, you know, imagine walking through uh, Zbyskaya and and, <laughs> and all that, right? So mm-hmm. out of all the places, when people ask me. What's you, what's what's your favorite place to go? And I, I, I don't have a, an answer to that, but I always bring up Belarus because it feels like another world, but at the same time, it's such a special feeling. I love how clean it is. Minsk is incredibly yeah. clean. And it's just, what do you go there to do? You just people watch. You just experience it. You just walk through the, the, the streets. Walk a lot. Yeah, yeah, you just walk and, mm-hmm. and that's it and explore like the subways. Actually, I think maybe I love Belarus more than you. <laughs> Not that I think... No, you don't. <laughs> no, because actually Masha right now lives in Yacheng, but we'll get to that eventually. So growing up in Minsk and going to school and stuff like that, were there other Vietnamese people in your in your classes? No, no other Vietnamese people in my classes. I think I was the only one. Maybe the second one in the whole school. Like there were like two girls, me and one another girl. Yeah, in the whole school. Yeah. In the whole school. Wow. Was there any discrimination or bullying or anything like that? No, no, not in the kindergarten, not in the school. Cool. I, everyone were, were nice to me. Yeah, no bullying. Maybe right now it's harder for kids because there are more Vietnamese at schools and and around places. But like when I was a kid, there were not so many of them. So I don't think people were bullying me. It does, doesn't make sense, you know. Like right, but so nobody came up to you and said, "Hey, you're Asian" or like or anything like that. Like that you all just played along nicely. Yeah, play along nicely. There was like a group of boys, but nothing serious. It wasn't making me cry or something. You know? So yeah, nothing like that. Nothing like from nothing, nothing like those things in American movies. Like maybe it's just an American thing to uh, to tease the uh, the the one the one Asian kid. Uh, but did you ever feel like there was a cultural conflict, like an identity crisis of like being Vietnamese or being Belarusian? No, not at all. I just knew that I think and I view the world like Belarusians do, I think so. And then I go back home and just speak Vietnamese with my parents. So no identity crisis. And people would ask me like, oh, so are you Vietnamese or are you Belarusian? I would I would say I'm Vietnamese, but I grew up in Belarus, something like that. I don't want to pick like one, you know, so I mixed <laughs> But there was no conflict between like your parents, like let's say your Belarusian friends got to do things and maybe your parents didn't want you to do certain things? Uh, they didn't let me go out a lot. They didn't let me go out to like ninth grade. Yeah. <laughs> I stayed at home quite quite a lot. Other stuff, no. It was fine. So there was nothing that you felt you were deprived of when it came to no. <laughs> okay. If well, the story too kind and sweet to you, you need some drama. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not that. It's just uh, in my experience, I, all these questions I'm asking mm-hmm. you is based off of a Vietnamese American experience who grew up mm-hmm. in the '90s in Southern California. And my experience is that there was a lot of things that I wished I could have done, and that I sort of like reason. Well, for example, uh, various sports. Like my parents were always afraid that I would get hurt. For example. 
So really? they, yeah, so they never let me mm-hmm. even like let's say ride a bicycle or hang out with uh, friends uh, that much. Um, they didn't allow like sleepovers. They didn't want me to go to other people's homes, for example, and they just kind of wanted to shelter me in a sense. And and, and I understood why because we lived in a quite a dangerous place dangerous. Mm-hmm. but at the same time there was other aspects that were like more materialistic that i wish that we had uh i mean i would see stuff on tv nice things right like um nice uh clothes or like how some people could have a dog as a pet or you know uh, they live in a fancy house or you know, like there was a certain stereotype about what mothers were like or what fathers were like. And and this is mostly from sitcoms and, and TV shows and movies and that kind of stuff. But I just wish that my parents were a little bit more understanding about certain things. Because um, at times they they wanted me to be a, more American. But at the same time, they also wanted me to be Vietnamese, uh, especially when it came to listening to them. Uh, so... I'll give you another example. When I started doing theater arts, my parents were against it. They thought that it was a waste of time that I should focus on math. And they never really went to see any of my shows. Uh, I did acting in high school. Mm-hmm. And I was I was crushed because there were castmates and, 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 and friends who, you know, their parents showered with them with love, even though they had like two lines in the whole in the whole play. But my parents were just never really that supportive and not to mention like, you know, them being superstitious about certain things. And I can go on and on, but this isn't about me. It's about you. And and this is definitely not about <laughs> Kyle's uh, sad childhood or anything like that. Uh, so you never had any conflicts like that. You never had any like questions like, for example, um, like if your parents did certain things that embarrass you, for example, that wasn't Belarusian that went against the societal norms. Uh, for instance? Yeah, sometimes I would get embarrassed by my parents. It's not getting embarrassed by them, but um, they, would, they wouldn't come a lot to my school. They wouldn't go to, um, how do you call them, parent meetings. Yeah, you know? okay, yeah. Uh, but my teachers understood that. I would say, like, if you, if you need something for me to deliver to my parents, tell me, I'll tell them later. And I understood that and didn't make them come to the meetings. Okay. It was fine, uh, but my mom is very kind. She's very generous, and my friends love her a lot. So, what what would be embarrassing to me that she would buy them stuff sometimes, and other moms don't do that. My friends would happily, uh, they were happily to take them. But for me, it was like embarrassing because my mom was too generous, and other moms went. Well, so that's, the, that's no, that's a great thing. That's a that's a Vietnamese. That's exactly my 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 yeah. my my point. Like, I, I hey, my mom is like that too. Like, they, Vietnamese people like to give things to other people. Mm-hmm. All right. And speaking of your mom, that's actually how we met. I think I met your mom first, right? For those first, of uh, yeah. for those of you who don't know, um, I actually met Masha's mom first at the market. And your mom, can I tell this story again? <laughs> <'Cause> you, <I'm... laughs> you show this story. <laughs> I, I, right, right. It's already it's already on my, my channel. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I just stumbled upon your mom. And just to backtrack, I met Masha's friend, Sheng Bui, first. Uh, he just reached out to me. He was just a, a viewer who was told about me through another viewer and all that. But anyways, long story short, I was in Belarus as a guest of Sheng. I was filming Vietnamese people all over the world and there I was in Belarus and in Minsk in this market and this woman comes up to me and say, do you want to marry my daughter? (laughs) And my first response was, well, you don't even know who I am. (laughs) And it turns out that her daughter was Masha. Yeah. And and then uh, I think a year or two later, uh, Masha moved to Nha Trang. We'll get there. And that's when we finally met. And I didn't meet mm-hmm. Masha when I was in Belarus because at that time, during that trip, it was a very short amount of uh, time and everything was kind of already preset. Um, so uh, throughout school and all that, there's not apparent differences that, that you kind of noted. Um, but was there any Vietnamese um, cultural aspects that you resented 
presented yeah in... was there something about being vietnamese that you didn't like my parents or my friends didn't like and they didn't understand why my parents are so strict like when i go out and they will call me like all the time they didn't understand that um what didn't i like about being vietnamese maybe the thing but it's not about being vietnamese it's just like i had some not difficulty i didn't have a belarusian passport for quite some time i had the permanent residency and i didn't get i couldn't travel a lot because mm. i would have to bring my vietnamese passport to the uh visa centers mm. to get the visa and my my friends would go to russia you know moscow st petersburg and i haven't done that so i haven't been to moscow wow. or kiev for example because of the visa thing they would just hop on the train and go and i would have to make to do like to apply that's, that's why it was that that part was annoying so, so even though you were born in belarus you didn't get a passport yeah that's not how it, it works work. right it's it doesn't not it's the, not like the yeah. american way right talk about that like mm -hmm. so so how how how, did, how would one get a passport over there you need to apply for the passport and then you have to wait that's all you don't have the test you will have to have like a list there is a list of documents that you need to hand in but the wait is long and it may take a year and after a year they may say like oh no you don't you won't get the passport yeah something like so, it's not it's not like in the states there is no test or um whatever you have it's like a citizenship test no te no test so how do you become a they just like, check. how do you become you a citizen need to like... live more than seven uh, you need to live more than seven years uh what else you need to I don't remember. So honestly. so if um, so if you're born there it doesn't guarantee that you're a citizen. No. No. You get the permanent permanent residency. <laughs> Is it because you so that's because you're Vietnamese, right? Because if you were Belarusian you would get it. Uh if one of my parents was Belarusian I would get it. Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. Because both of my parents are Vietnamese. Gotcha. Uh, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. This I already kind of knew, uh, but I didn't know that you had to, you didn't have to test. You just kind of have to apply. So do you have a, a Belarusian passport now? Yes. Oh, good. Good. That's, that's awesome. How many Vietnamese people are there in Belarus, do you think? And tell me more about the community over there. What, what's it like? I don't know in Belarus, but in Minsk, I think it's like 2000, maybe. Does everybody and... know everybody? Yeah, mostly. But I don't know, like in America, there's a thing, there are too many like Vietnamese people, for example, yeah, and they live in like close knit communities, they don't go outside the community, right? So they don't have to learn English, they don't have to. Is there, is there a thing in the States? Yeah, yeah, it depends on the you community. I mean? Yeah, it depends on the community and, and depends on the state, right? Like here in California, mm -hmm. Little Saigon, San Jose, um, mm. people don't have to learn English because there's media already in Vietnamese and they can go to Vietnamese supermarkets mm -hmm. and there's actually Vietnamese taught in some high schools in Orange County as well. Um, but wow. in Belarus, it's quite different. There's no such thing because uh, the Vietnamese community is not that big, but it is it's close knit and we have, we celebrate Tet every year, like all together. So that's good. Now, what kind of jobs do most Vietnamese Belarusians do? Mm, like, like your, yeah, like your parents' generation. Yeah. I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry. They mostly work. They mo they mostly work in the market. So you either choose you choose to um, sell things in your shop or you sell food in the. It's not food truck. It's like food kiosk or something like that. So you have like two choices. Yeah. So in either food or like selling. Like clothing and stuff like that. Clothing, yeah. Clothing. The food kiosks that Masha mentioned are basically food shacks, food stalls that are stalls, yeah. that sell like uh, fast food type of uh, stuff, like kebabs mm -hmm. and hamburgers and, and that kind of stuff, uh, hot dogs and and all that. Is there discrimination? Generally, I mean, of course, there's discrimination everywhere. But I'm saying, like in I the work field, is it is it more difficult to get a job if you're if you're Asian? Let's say you have an Asian name. 
I don't think so because, to be honest, I I applied for for a job and I got it. My friends, uh, yeah, they all have jobs, proper jobs, and some of them opened their own business. So no discrimination there. Yeah. So so would you say being so would you say being Vietnamese Belarusian would that be an advantage or a disadvantage? Um. Like, is it a cool thing? Like, do, like do your it's do a you, cool thing. It's yeah, not an it's, advantage or disadvantage. It's a cool thing. So, so your friends because think it's cool. People pay attention to. Ah, uh, okay. Um, like people pay attention. People ask stuff. So yeah, it's a cool thing. So like you walk into a club and all the all the eyes, all the heads turn turn your way. Especially maybe not in the club because it's too dark. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking too. A Russian humor there. Oh, excuse, sorry, Belarusian humor. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. There is a difference, by the way. Um, and you guys even have your own language too, the Belarusian language. Yeah, we do. It's a state language. One of the two. We have two state languages, Belarusian and Russian. Did you always want to go to Vietnam? Did you knew you were going to go to Vietnam after university? Uh, no, I didn't. It's just I have a brother here, and he has a company, a touring company, and he's like, hey, would you like to try? And I was like, why not? So I uh, had a practice over the summer, and then he said, when you graduate, you can come back here and work here. I was like, okay, sure. But when I graduated, I was waiting for my passport, so it took some time. It took like, I waited like eight months. So after the I was sitting at home, you know what to do and I found a job a good one but then I decided either to I decided to move anyways because it's an experience I would like to try something new that's why I came here I see if not for the job opportunity I don't think I would have moved to Nha Trang or Vietnam we'll talk a little bit more about Vietnam but something came across my mind Belarus for me the prices and the value are just out of this world in mm -hmm. terms of cost of living, in mm -hmm. terms of a loaf of bread, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I, it's, I know it's been a while since you've been there, but like how, how, how much does like a typical like one or two bedroom apartment in the city cost to rent? One or two bedroom apartment? I think yeah. it's like, let's say two bedroom apartment is like $400. $400 in, in, the, in the capital of Minsk, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a, it depends on the location. Right, but it's if incredible. If downtown, it's yeah. like maybe like six hundred. Yeah, but that's still incredible because it's downtown. I mean, you're central to everything, right? I, I remember like going to eat sushi and like this whole big plate was like twenty dollars U.S. You know, I, it's for you. It's twenty dollars for for us. It's like a lot of money. <laughs> right, because because yeah. it's all relative, right? I I, I understand mm -hmm. that. Uh, and and I remember uh, somebody telling me that yes, things are cheaper here. But things that Americans have easier access to are way more expensive, like electronics and stuff like that. Is that true? TV and cameras and laptops and stuff like that. It's still very expensive, right? It is, it is expensive, yeah. What do you mean by expensive? It's just... Like, I mean, it's normal retail. Of, no, no, I mean, maybe the price is fair, but that price is too high for the, you know, for the middle class. Right, like I the average, the yeah. Salaries, uh, the average salary is like quite low. Right, that's the salaries are low. Expensive. Well, that's my point. Like, for example, a laptop, let's say in America, costs $1,000. In Belarus, mm -hmm. it might still cost 1000 or more, probably more. A little more, Right, yeah. while people there are making a lot less. Mm -hmm. So my point was some things are way cheaper, like food and domestic products and stuff like that. But imported stuff costs a lot right yeah i see so do you know like the typical let's say i don't know a teacher's wage over there a month 250 dollars 250 dollars for like a maybe 300 yeah for right like teacher right mm -hmm. teachers 300 us um mm -hmm. how about doctors Four hundred five. I'm not sure. Right, but, well, is, but that's still very low. Enough. Right, yeah, yeah exactly. Low. Wow. See, that that would be very shocking for a lot of people, a lot of Americans, mm -hmm. to hear that. And that was something that was very surprising for me as well. Um, 
it's 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 incredible it's uh it's it's hard to it's hard to imagine um but that's that's just the reality of it now now that you're in vietnam do you see yourself returning to belarus anytime soon i mean obviously not with the covid but like never now yeah um i would like to go there and visit my parents and friends you know but to stay and look for a job then maybe not because i like my job here not right now but i love the job i have here yeah. so maybe just for for visiting not living and going back to Belarus, you, know? you don't you don't see yourself going back there and to, to live in anytime soon really you're happy you're in vietnam uh, it's not happy or not it's the job here is better than the one they had in Belarus. the yeah. one i had in Belarus was good too but like but there's well right but there's more to life than 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 a job right i mean in, in the grand scheme of things grand scheme yeah of things. like in the big picture like in the in the long term in the long term because in the long term i don't see myself living here too so i don't know from the last time that people saw you on my channel which i mean it's been over a year now i can't believe it right it's yeah. been over a year um like are are you happier or you know are you assimilating better to it like are you used to it like how vietnamese are you now I'm more local now, and my accent is better. Some people say I speak like with northern accent, which I'm, I'm so like I'm so happy because I love northern accent. I don't like southern; I like northern, and people understand me better. But still, uh, they're like, "Oh, your Vietnamese is so good," but I'm like, "Give me five minutes, I, my accent will jump like again, like on a roller coaster." Um, I drive. A motor, um, a scooter now, so it's good. Um, I've been to, I've been around, now traveled a little, so that's good too. And I have a group of friends. Yeah. <laughs> because yay. when we, when I met you, I just moved like a month. That was like a month yeah. since I moved. So back then I didn't have anything or anybody. Yeah, I remember that. Um, I remember I, it's and and like I said, I could definitely relate to moving to a new place, a new country. I mean, mm -hmm. like Vietnam, like that. But of course, you moved across the street from a beach, so your life was a little, <laughs> you know, a little bit nicer uh, than than mine. I haven't uh, been to the beach since moving. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? You're, you're across from the beach. When you haven't been to the beach? I know. Maybe I just don't go to the beach. I love beaches, but I just didn't have. I, did, I don't know, maybe just because it's just right in front of me and I don't care about it. You know what they say, like, when you don't have it, you want it. But when it's right there, you're like, oh, maybe next time. So maybe that's my situation. <laughs> that's exactly how I feel about many, many things. Now, in terms of Vietnam, right, mm -hmm. what are some new things that you've learned while living there versus just vacationing or visiting? Um, because I lived in Europe, so I say, uh, I was like, you were smart, but like Asian dumb, you know, paying more, stuff like that. Because in Vietnam, for example, they, they're very quick. And we are like a little slow, we slow a little bit. They were very quick and then like something so fast, so fast. And they would uh, expect you to do one thing. They want you to do one thing, but they're expecting you to do it two things but they won't say to do the other thing they would like they would think that you would do that um logically you know for example uh your mom says bring me an apple right you bring the apple but she expected to bring the knife too and the plate and the salt and stuff not the apple not the apple do you know what i mean <laughs> did you get that <laughs> right so so the vietnamese smartness was you got to bring everything the knife and the salt and everything no it's, it's just the start they live like that the whole life because they they don't eat apple that we like the way i ate apple in belarus like i just ate the apple they cut the here in vietnam they cut the apple they uh need salt for the they need a plate for it you know they don't eat the whole thing right so there's a certain the order right there's a certain order a certain yeah. structure to certain things. Structure, yeah. The uh, way that they do things that is different from my, from my experience. Interesting. Like, for example, if somebody were to, hey, go get me some chicken, they would bring, like, a, a living chicken over and you would have to, like, <laughs> butcher it right there. And 
apple example was the best one. Why why did you pick the chicken? Chicken is different. Uh, well, the apple makes sense too, but um, but yeah, you're right. Actually, you know, I never really thought about that. That's that's Remember? really interesting. No, that's really interesting. How like the 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 apple analogy, the apple example. You know, it it makes a lot of sense. How structure is different over there, and, and not Things only that, yeah. more complex because in in Belarus, for example, we are very direct. Mm -hmm. You you ask for something, you get it. Here, you need to like, oh, maybe she meant that, or maybe she wanted this thing. So I need to bring all something like that. Is this related yeah. to your work? Is this is this any any struggles with work? Yeah, any sometimes. cultural issues in in work like that? Yeah, a lot. I face some issue at my workplace. Some, uh, for example, when I uh, just moved, I had uh, I need, um, I had to speak to my HR, and she was like explaining me stuff, and I was like, mm-hmm, 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 that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm, that mm -hmm, one, and then I went to my place, and the HR she spoke to my supervisor, and she was like, oh, Masha is so. Well, she didn't say rude, but something similar, rude, but like less, um, less harsh. She was like, she's so rude. She was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, all the time. And my supervisor in a motherly way, like, uh, said to me, like, mm -hmm, it's very rude in Vietnamese. You need to say za every mm -hmm. single time. And I didn't know that. So I mm -hmm. teach them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I that's, don't use it that's so, it's so natural. Say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, it's yeah. rude. I've heard. I, I think. That. I think I've heard that too. Yeah. 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 For for yeah too. Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 All the time. But do you? Like, mm -hmm. So so you yeah. But do you do you too? That too? No. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the tourism industry, right? And with COVID, Ooh. it's really hurt Vietnam and like anywhere else really. It's hurt every country, right? But how has that affected you? Um. We luckily we can still travel around Vietnam. That's good. But if talk about my work, we don't have. We have like little work, so we don't work much. We the last time I really work was like in June, I think. Since June, we just we just do like little stuff. So it's barely so because it's, the borders are closed. It's it's almost yeah, unimaginable for me to to think of Nha Chang without droves and droves of Russians coming in every day, you know, at that airport, you know. Uh, there are direct flights, or maybe there were. Um, so that that is, okay. But is it is it more quiet now in Nha Chang? Nha Chang is very quiet. Like, because Nha Chang is not very, it's not a very popular destination among Vietnamese people. They, they would, they, I think they would go, they would rather go to Phu Quoc than Nha Chang. So, yeah. Yeah, Chink is very quiet right now, and there are so many, there there are so many places that clo places that close, of course, due to lack of demand. You know? So, uh, like what, like what, like tours or restaurants or what, what's close? Yeah, restaurants, shops. Um, yeah, mostly restaurants and shops. So, does that mean that there are deals right now for hotels? Is it cheaper, like the Vin yeah, Pearl it, it, and all it that? Is. Yeah. It's so much cheaper. <laughs> so much cheaper now to go to Vinpearl. Yeah. Have you been, by the way? To Vinpearl? Yeah. Once. Okay. And I haven't ridden any of the rides, but I saw the hotel is fine for me. Okay. Vinpearl is not my place. I don't get it. You're not into that? No. <laughs> huh. Okay. Are you? Were you? Yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh... I mean, right now, how my life is, yeah, I'm into anything right now, to be honest. Yeah, I'll go to Vin Pearl in a heartbeat, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm more, I'm more like a Legoland type of a guy, uh, to be honest with you, but... When I just talk to you, you speak about lockdown, but when I um, talk to my parents, I'm like, it's just, it's so dangerous. You have to have a mask, you go outside, and because cases in those are rising, you know, and it's so, I cannot understand then because people still partying and they're not afraid and the mask are not not everyone is wearing a mask and i'm so scared for my parents and my friends over there yeah but they have vodka right i heard vodka kills the corona right <laughs> that's, a that's a joke that's a joke that's a joke by the way the that's president said the same thing so that's uh that's a joke for the record that's a yeah. joke 
but recently, Belarus made the news uh, for political aspects that we don't have to necessarily get into, um, which is okay. I, I respect that decision, uh, even though I wanted to. I really wanted to. But it's okay. We'll save it for another day. <laughs> um, no, but actually, you know, when, when that was going on, um, mm -hmm. I was actually very emotional, you know, because it, yeah. was, it was on the news. It was on the news. This country, this place that I love so much, was in mainstream news and all those people out there i walked the same streets and i heard exactly what they wanted mm -hmm. as almost as soon as i i got into belarus i already heard all those things all the grievances and all the issues and, and all the problems and stuff like that right so i was already aware of it and when it was brought to mainstream light i was actually very very emotional um about it um and no it's just it was just a very monumental moment right um when i saw the pictures i was i felt so proud of the of the people because yeah. they were speaking this government i don't want to say it for the first time it wasn't the first time of course but the amount of people the the organization of people how Oh, they're so brave yes. and they're so open. I was so proud of them. Yeah. Absolutely. I was so worried, but very proud. <laughs> Absolutely. Random, but what, what, what does your mom think about me, by the way? <laughs> about you? Yeah. <laughs> she met you once, like, for five seconds. Uh, I mean, she, she, I she, she knows who I, I am. Think she <laughs> I guess she glad I met you because, uh, because of the videos she get to see me if she wants if she misses me she can like hop on youtube and watch our videos so, so she, she's like she likes that part <laughs> so so she's seen she's seen the videos that i made in yeche yeah yeah, yeah uh, okay fun. okay yeah no you know i i just want to go back to that again you know like the vietnamese people in belarus oh my gosh like shung's family and and stuff like that mm -hmm. when i left i'm getting a little bit emotional thinking about about them when i left i felt so loved like I went and stayed in his apartment and it's not a big apartment. You know, it was, I felt very homely how they, they welcomed me with such open arms. I've been to many places and I've met many Vietnamese people. And I have to say that the Belarusian Vietnamese are perhaps the most friendliest, the most welcoming people, Vietnamese people. I've ever met and no offense to any other countries right but if you factor in the entire picture and the entire the entire thing right of how different mm -hmm. we are and like I said the polar opposites and stuff like that the fact that I was so so appreciative I felt like I was a celebrity there right going there I remember Shung took me to a, a, a pho restaurant and the owner didn't didn't want to take my money you know and I and he didn't know who I was he didn't know that I, I was going to make a YouTube video. I didn't promise to promote him or anything like that. He was just like, you know what? Hey, you're a friend of Shung's. You're our friend. I'm like, what? That doesn't even happen. You know, that doesn't even happen to my home, my own hometown, you know, yet alone, you know, this place where I know they don't make that much money. I know it's a struggle, you know, out there. And just going through the markets and, and stuff like that. And I don't get that same feeling here for for sure you know going to the jo -jo and the swap meets and the flea markets here and you know with other vietnamese people you know like they're just kind of busy you know and and over there it was just like oh yo you're vietnamese oh let's talk oh you're american let's talk you know i just felt i felt so special being over there because those people made me feel that way um i don't know there's just something about it you know just you, you know what i mean like it's, it's you feel like you're one big family over there mm -hmm. It's maybe because the community in Belarus is not big, and the country itself, Belarus country, like we, we're close to each other, we're kind to each other because it's Belarus, you know. So what else is new? Is it for the video? Or is it just oh, we're just talking. No, I was just talking. I mean, this this video or not? I'm just I'm just curious. I haven't spoke, <laughs> I haven't spoken to you like this in a long time. See, I I I love doing this now. I should have done this earlier, to be honest. It's because I'm getting mm -hmm. to know things about people who I knew. And sometimes there wasn't enough time for us to talk because I was too busy making videos. I mean, you know how yeah. it was, you know, traveling with me, right? Um, even, I remember. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like it was hard to even keep a conversation sometimes because I was kind of either really worried about the angle, the shots, worried about what I was going to say. The light. The lighting, yeah. right, and stuff like that. So vlogging and making videos while you're traveling with some people, it, it – you kind of you're kind of in your own bubble a little bit right and and i think like throughout the years i've i've been able to do it better where i have time for people but sitting down and talking to you like this uh like other people that i've done this with it's really really something that i value and i'm I'm glad i finally decided to do this i've been wanting to do this for a long time but i've been kind mm-hmm. of like in this funk in this uh, deep state of sadness and like just I had a bunch of issues I mean you know a, a little bit about it already we, we, we've yeah, spoken we mm-hmm. but it, it really prevented me from feeling inspiration from various things from doing what I love and that's connecting with people so I think this is, is, is wonderful so it doesn't have to be just for the video I mean it, it can just be for us as well and for the video I realize that I miss Vietnam so much that I'm starting to crave durian, which I normally don't crave. I'm starting to crave it, actually. Um, I mean, I can get it here in the supermarkets here, you know, frozen or like in a... Frozen? In a, yeah, they sell frozen durian here. Uh, and also like durian in uh, cakes and drinks and stuff like that. But it's not the same. The, the durian... It's not and, the same thing, yeah. It's not the same. And that's how I know I, I, I miss uh vietnam so much is that you start craving for things that you normally wouldn't eat you know on a, on a whim so that's that's another vietnamese aspect is uh when you know you you like durian that much if there's if there's one thing, even though you don't like durian i don't really like it that much i'll eat it from time to time and i'll you know i'll have cravings from time to time but but now it's because <laughs> something is clearly lacking you know in me seriously after meeting you i find myself saying xiao and stuff mm-hmm. like that from time to time Bong nam shao, you know, shin yuk and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it, you really mess me up. You really mess me up and it's stuff the like right that. It's right way know. to say. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, well, from what my parents taught me, <laughs> you know, uh, and and now any time that I I hear somebody is from you know Ming Chung or like Da Nang or something like that, I'm like yeah yeah yeah, ba bong nam shao. They're like ah, I'm like yeah, you know it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, actually, that's the one thing. Like, I when I was young, I was always shy and I didn't really want to connect with older Vietnamese people because I didn't know what to say to them, right? But now mm-hmm. I I I like it. You know, I, I I like just not just practicing Vietnamese, but like being able to connect on a more personal, deeper level, um, and really traveling and and going to Vietnam, living there really has brought me that much closer to Vietnamese elders. Now, do you think, is it the same for you? Do you think that you understand your parents and the culture more, the people more, now that you lived over there? Um, there was never such a thing that I didn't understand my parents. I didn't like that they were strict, but they, wasn't, they didn't act the way that I didn't understand. But about the relative things is that, that used, uh, when I came to Vietnam, I was there for summer only and they didn't get to know me and they still don't know me and so now we're like building our relationship and they think I'm dumb or slow and they don't really understand me and they treat me different in comparison to my other cousins because they grew up in Vietnam they know what to do and I'm like thing old they don't get they don't let me cook they don't let me do the dishes they're like, Masha, are you fine? Because they're afraid that I'm too fragile and I will get lost. And I don't know. So I think you're, like so I think you're some kind of like uh, some European princess or something like that. Bimbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. European princess, right. Because my mom do all this stuff. I don't do anything. But the truth is, I, in, when I was in Belarus, I was the one who did the chores and stuff. But they don't know that part. So, mm. I really hey, think I'm like a princess. I can relate to that. Uh, my cousins in Vietnam think I'm lazy and I don't know anything, and I'm yo yo. Right. They call me yo yo because uh, I I don't do like manly things. Uh, you know, I just, I mean, they just know me as the guy who brings a camera around all the time. You know, like I'm, I uh, they they think that I'm I can't do call. That's what they think because I always complain about the heat. 
right? Like they they invite yeah. me to sleep over and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, I can't. I just stay in a hotel. They think, oh, you're too good for us. You know, why don't you sleep here? I was like, well, I, I can't sleep if I'm covered in sweat. You know, I I need air conditioning. And yes, okay, maybe mm-hmm. maybe I'm you know kung tu ka duk. I can't you know can't suffer tu ka right or can't endure right. But you know, I gotta wake up the next morning too. So I've 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 dealt with that. Kind of like that cultural rift, that kind of like mm-hmm. that separation where they think of you in a different way. Because I feel like my cousins don't really know me; they just know a part mm-hmm. of me. Do your cousins over there know you, or do they just know that side where they prejudge they, like they, that? Is I there? Don't think is, they really is, know me because. Is there like a wall already? Because, is there a wall like okay, no, she's she's from no Europe. Wall. There's Belarus. No, with my cousin is fine. They just think that everything is brought to me on the plate. I don't need to do stuff, you know. Oh, oh okay, I, okay. Yeah. Oh, you're so soon. And you're so soon, Masha. So soon. So right? soon, yeah. You hear that, right? Oh, Masha, the người Tây. Oh, oh, so chẳng qua. Yeah, người Tây chẳng qua. Some of them. No, not 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 not. They don't say that to me. Trust me, because I'm I I'm not chunk. Even when I was in Belarus, I wasn't chunk. So, uh, yeah, they don't understand why I'm here. They're like, why didn't you stay there? There's uh, Belarus is better, but they don't know the truth. Oh, hey, yes. I I heard that all the time when I was in Vietnam with my cousins. Mm-hmm. They thought I was crazy. They're like, <laughs> oh, someone missing? Oh, what the hell? Like that's their goal. Like my cousins, some of them. Uh, on my my mom's side, uh, they want to go. Mm-hmm. Like they, that's that's what they want to do. Everyone, yeah. But, the grass is always greener. Or something. Like yeah, that. but they with, always want to go. They don't care about the hardships that in my face. They just want to go. But it, uh, it depends on not not all of them want to go. Like in terms of my cousin, and not all Vietnamese people want to go either. I mean, with social media these days, a lot of people know the truth, right? But. Um, for my cousins at that time, uh, because they want to reunite with their sisters and and stuff like that, that that was that is their dream for some of them, but not all of them. Many see the light, and they know that America is not that great. Uh, it can be, you know, in in various things, and you know, sometimes I, I don't know, I, you know, with the recent politics in America and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm. I just kind of, my, my because my parents they they always want that idea that America is like the best country or or whatever because they they sacrifice a lot to 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 come over, mm-hmm. and I think they're slowly starting to realize that America is great for many many things, but it's also pretty bad for many many other things. And my friend Dewey on this uh, on this podcast interview said something that really resonated uh, with me. He said, America is a first world country, but not everybody lives like the first world. And it's true. Um, so in that sense, I mean, Belarus has its problems as well. But there's really no perfect place. W- w- what do you have plans uh, for the rest of the day? I think I'll go out, grab a coffee, have a coffee, and maybe i go out, eat, eat out with my mates and lads. Wow. You know? Hanging we'll out see, with friends. We'll wow. That's an interesting friends. concept. That's a very interesting concept. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Wow. Vietnam is really... But it's getting really... boring, you know? <laughs> I miss job. I miss working. <laughs> really? Because we get to see each other every day and we don't know what to talk about. Yeah, you don't know what to really? do anymore, we right? Topics, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's how it is. You just go eat and eat in silence and that's it. <laughs> hey, but you know, on the bright side, at least you're able to do that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Kara. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I, I one day I will be able to eat with friends too, even if it's in <laughs> silence. You know, one day I really look forward to that day. But anyways, Masha, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm I'm glad that we're able to reconnect like this, and I'm sure that many people are happy to see you again. Uh, let's do this again soon. Uh, best of luck to you over there. Mm-hmm. You don't really need it, but best of luck to me then. Uh, <laughs> Have a have a great day ahead, yeah. You too. Thank you for inviting me, and it's a great idea. I'm I'm looking forward to your series. How many parts will you have? Do you know? I don't know. It depends on 
depends on people? if people will like if I don't know, we'll see. I'm just I'm just, you know, just anybody who comes in mind and, you know, who wants to be mm-hmm. on, they can reach out to me and it's not just people who I know, um but I'm focusing a lot on past friends and stuff like that just because I'm a little bit more comfortable with them like like yourself but mm-hmm. I'm open to hearing from anybody with a story right I even thought about maybe doing like you know 50 Vietnamese people from 50 states but I don't know it's it really depends it really depends I don't know how many mm-hmm. I'm going to do I'm just going to do it until I'm able to like you know maybe I'll get suddenly busy with something or all that but you know mm-hmm. this is a, it, it's fun especially when I can't go out there to create certain things and I feel like this is just another layer to kyolay.net um and especially if you can highlight certain people who like yourselves are interesting and i feel like the world deserves to know more inspirational vietnamese people uh people out there doing great things and not necessarily like famous people or anything like that but everybody has a story and i think your story is really amazing and i really respect the fact that you went over there by yourself to start a new life like that um So, thanks again and thank you Kyle. We'll see you soon and thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let other people know about it by sharing it, giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. It's been a while since I've said that. Give me a thumbs up everybody. It's been a while. It's it's been a while. It really it really has uh but either way, I'm having a great time doing these interviews and I hope you're enjoying them as well. And let me know who you would like to see. And again, if you want to be on one day and you want to chat with me, send me an email or connect to me through social media. That's it for now. Thank you, Masha. Okay, that's it. No, no, thank you. Thank you. It was uh it was it was great to see you again. Yeah, me too because we had like finally we had like a proper conversation. I know. We I know. talk about most about me, but